everyone, and welcome to another episode of Orgasmic Living. I am your host, Patty Alfonso, creator of the Orgasmic Body Love Experience and Pole Dancing for Consciousness, and OMG, today's guest. It's going to be juicy. I'm so excited. This is Dr. Jolie Hamilton. She is a relationship coach for couples who color outside the lines. First of all, I love that as someone who colors outside of the lines a lot. That's like my favorite tagline ever. Uh, Jolie is a best-selling author, a TEDx speaker, an entrepreneur, a love and sex expert. And I cannot wait to dive into, of course, we're going to talk about orgasmic living, but Jolie's expertise is around jealousy. So like I said, I am pretty sure it's going to be a super juicy conversation. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Jolie Hamilton to the show. How are you, gorgeous? I am great. And I'm so happy to be here with you, Patty, because talking about orgasms, like they're like, they're just a real regular thing that I get to have in my life makes my day. It makes my week. <laughs> well, let's, let's start off with that. The question that I love asking all of my guests. Um, and I've said this before, but I'll repeat it again, just in case you're someone who's watching for the first time in my work with orgasmic living and working with women and bodies and sort of pulling this energy out of the bedroom and including it in our everyday life. What I've realized is that everyone has a different idea, a different definition, a different experience of what orgasmic living is for them. So Jolie, what is orgasmic living for you? What does it mean to you? What does it look like for you? What is, what comes up for you when I use those words? Yeah. I love this question because it instantly had me drop into my body and I, that didn't come naturally for me. Like I, I was a, in my head person for most of my life and it's taken some effort to be able to drop in. But the question, because it had this word orgasmic in it reminded me to drop in and check in with my body. And the instant answer I got when I read it the first time was it's having access to all of me. Orgasmic living is being able to access what is going on in all parts of me, not just my body, but also the subtle body, like my, my, my presence in this world. And when I'm in touch with all of that, I have access to being able to find my pleasure and to setting my boundaries. And those two things together let me move in, a, in the world in a way that leaves me feeling good, leaves me feeling pleasure, even if I'm doing something that isn't typically considered in the orgasmic realm. <laughs> right, right. I love that. Yeah. I mean, look, if we didn't have bodies, we would not be able to have orgasms. So it is a hundred percent a body sensation presence thing, right? And but I love I love what you're adding to it, which is the most important part is that is that living orgasmically actually gives you access to all of you when you're really willing to be present with everything. And that's like the good, the bad, the ugly, the pretty, the miraculous, the mysterious, the like all of it, being really willing to be present with everything without any kind of judgment, right? And then yeah. navigating and playing in life with that energy. So I love it. And, and I think that this kind of takes us right into what we're gonna talk about today, which is jealousy. And I was watching your TED talk and, and everybody else should go check it out. I just Googled Jolie Hamilton TED Talk. It came up right away. So just do it. Um, but one of the things that you said, which is, you know, I think really true, especially around this particular energy, the energy of jealousy, right? I think that a lot of us really do experience, it's, it's such a shamed behavior. Yes. It's like, like there, there's something wrong with you because you're jealous. Like you should know, like there's all of this just insanity around that energy. So I'm really looking forward to like, what do you know about jealousy? I know that you've got some yummy different perspectives as a researcher of this particular energy. Um, what could you share with the audience and with me, what's like the one surprising thing that you have discovered in your research around jealousy? Okay, I'm gonna go right 
to Dude. my favorite fact, which usually doesn't come out till we're deep into it. Um, jealousy is a great way to get off. It's a great way to have juicy, delicious orgasms for some people, not for everyone. When I was doing my research, I, so I'm a qualitative researcher. So I study small pools of people, but we go deep in our exploration of what they're feeling. Um, a third of the participants identified that jealousy was one of the ways that they created their erotic stories. It was one of the ways that they experienced like, Ooh, my partner's wanted by someone else. And that gets me close. Ooh. And now they could follow that thread. Now for some people, it totally doesn't work this way, but if this is you first off, you're not weird. You're that's well within the range of normal. And two, you can leverage that. And what I've found myself is that we can actually leverage that intentionally. So if jealousy is a struggle for us, one of the ways we can flip our ideas of jealousy on their head is say, how could I use this in my fantasy? How yeah. could I get myself to a spot where this becomes part of my pleasure? Yeah. I love, yes. I love that you said that. And I was, I was working with a client once who had tons of jealousy. And it's interesting because I sort of gave her that kind of scenario in terms of, you know, and, and I myself use this sometimes. So you're right on with the erotic piece of it. Like when you're out in public with your partner mm -hmm. uh, and I am speaking specifically right now of like monogamous partners where, yeah. it's just, you know, and when you're out like at a party or you're out at an event or you having dinner and really a admiring your partner, you know, we get stuck like in the everyday humdrum of life yeah. and relationship and groceries and cooking and da, 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 da. But when you're out and about, then your partner gets to kind of shine in their own space. And I remember she, she was talking about, um, you know, when, when she could see other women flirting with her partner, it would just like create all of this anxiety and energy. And I was like, well, what if you could look at it in a different way? Yeah. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, what if like you're secure, you know that he's coming home with you. You know that he's not going to do anything. What if just the idea, right, of like allowing yourself to be orgasmically turned on that someone else is hitting on him or, you know, whatever, but the knowing yeah. that he's coming home with you and letting that be fuel for what happens later in the evening. Not to mention that like flirting is a really generative energy for the body. We all love to be flirted with. We right. all love that that energy coming towards us, right? We shouldn't have to cut off energies just because we're in a relationship. And she, it just like, she was just like, she had experienced like really not just on the sort of unhealthy spectrum of jealousy, like when you can go into like yeah. control and, and all of that. Um, experienced a lot of that in her life. So it kind of like the brain patterning of I'm- It's a short circuit. Yes, <laughs> yes, it totally short circuited her like patterning around this topic. Um, so I love that that's like your, I, I love it. Cause you yeah. know, yeah. It's just, it's, it's one of those things that people aren't expecting to totally, see totally. because if you experience jealousy in a really profoundly challenging way, if it brings up your childhood stuff, or it really touches into your attachment stuff, or yeah. if it's simply the story you have gotten from the culture we live in, which yeah. is filled with stories that jealousy is bad. Yeah. And also if your partner's not jealous, then they probably don't love you enough. So also just get torn in half by all of that. But <laughs> there's no winning. There's no, no, there's no winning. There's no winning if <laughs> unless we take jealousy and we like actually bring it into our consciousness yeah. and start to address the fact that it exists. It exists and it exists with a dark side, a light side. It's it's not just one thing. So yeah, I like that. That flipping it on its head and just exploring what if. You don't have to get off on it, but what if you found it charged? What if it were? So I love how you put that question. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, what's coming up as you're talking right now, um, which I believe you also mentioned in your Ted talk, but I've also looked at jealousy in this way. It's really like a, just a deep fear of change. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Like, like, I'm experiencing jealousy, but really it's the fear that you'll like them better than you'll like me, right? Than you'll like me. And I think there's some like instinctual sort of, 
you know, to quote Alison Armstrong's work, like cave woman energy in our DNA around that of like, uh, so I'll let you, you're, you're, well, you're, yeah, yeah, you're, you're touching on it. it. So if everybody listening, just like for a second, let themselves feel in their body, what just the word jealousy even brings up, you're probably going to notice right away that it's not one thing. It's a whole host of other emotions. It jealousy is a complex emotion. So we got to pop the hood on it and see what's in there. But fear always, because the very nature of jealousy, like all jealousy is, is a word that we've des designed to describe a set of emotions that get all tangled up. And that emotion stems, researchers can spot it as early as six months old, right? It stems from that bond we have with our caregiver when we are literally helpless and we need that bond and any interruption to that bond would be a, a survival threat. Right. Yeah. So when you're cast back to that spot, when jealousy rises up, there is that DNA level. The evolutionary psychologists would say, yeah, absolutely. You are just boom. You're right back in your DNA. But, if you keep me, the tiger is going to eat me. Oh, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So now what I have is when I want to know if jealousy is present, I can, I can look at the situation and say, okay, I have me, I have my beloved. And then is there a third party, either a real one or an imagined one? Doesn't have to be a real one. Could absolutely be random Instagram imaginal person <laughs> that I imagine is going to interrupt my love bond. Mm -hmm. When that comes up, different people are going to feel jealousy in different ways. Some people feel a lot of anger erupt with their jealousy. Some people feel a lot of sadness and some people go right to grief. They sort of anticipate the loss already and they like dive headlong into this anticipatory grief. All of us though are dealing with fear and that fear is insecurity, anxiety. It's like the fear then could be broken down further. How does the fear show up? For some people, it's a full on panic. It, it just goes right into our, our nervous system and, and we become almost not ourselves. We we're in the grip of it. And this is, I studied jealousy from a depth psychological angle, which means I'm taking really seriously the fact that we don't have, we don't know everything about ourselves. There's stuff in our unconscious. There's stuff that is just deeply embedded in our collective and individual unconscious reality. And jealousy really likes to hide there. It's like a, a Loch Ness monster kind of situation where then, you know, if the head pops up, now we have to deal with it. But most of the time it's just swimming around in the background. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, this jealousy has been something that I have struggled with in, in, and I was, I was tapping into this as I knew that we would be talking and I do remember when I was younger, you know, younger boyfriends experiencing yeah. that energy. And it did, it does create like a lot of anxiety. And then I notice the stories that I start making up um, in my head about there you go. nothing, you know, yep. and then all of a sudden you're, you're just sort of gripped by this imaginary world that you haven't even confirmed is anything. And, um, my, I remember my parents, my dad was, uh, you know, he had his fun on the side yeah. and I'm Latin. So, so for the Latin, like, you know, it's expected that the yeah. man is going to cheat and then it's expected that the woman will just suck it up and put up with it right. or, you know, many other varieties of that. So I do remember this, that energy being really present in our household. So I'm really aware that a lot of this is just sort of passed down from my family and from my mom and what she was experiencing, like while I was in the womb, you know, speaking of yep. like things being in our bodies, right? They're just in our cellular memory in a way that my point with all of this is like that we have to bring this energy to the light. I think that's like when, when you're ashamed of anything, the one thing that's going to change it is the willingness to talk about it and the yes. willingness to bring it to the light and the willingness to be present orgasmically, like orgasmic living, being present with it. Like, okay, this is a part of me that every, you know, everyone judges as bad and wrong and, oh, you must be insecure and da, da, da. it's like, 
what if it's not any of that? You know, what if it's not. Um, what if it's not any of that? But I, this is this is a topic that I have struggled with in in my life, um, and I wanted to ask you about how we could use this energy. I like calling it an energy because the word jealousy itself has such connotations. It does. So and they're not helpful. <laughs> no, no. So what are some of the ways that couples, men, women, whoever can use this energy to actually create a deeper connection with, yeah. with their partner or with themselves for that matter? <laughs> the, yeah, there's the thing. So when I began my study of jealousy, I wasn't, I didn't start from the premise that jealousy was bad because of the way I was studying it. Uh, when we when we look at something archetypally, we're talking about something that innately is neutral, but there is a shadow side and a light side. Okay, so I entered in from that direction, which was wonderful because most people were trained to only look at this shadowy side. They were, or they were told that they were bad when they when jealousy came up, like right from the beginning when you're little and you don't share your toys. Um, or they've simply been told when they had a, a very real insecurity come up, mm -hmm. they were maybe told that they had nothing to fear, but it was a lie. And, and so there's like a shame story around that, around, can I trust myself? Right. Can I like, wait, am I, am I allowed to pay attention to this part of me? Mm -hmm. But, but what I noticed over time talking to people about jealousy was that Jealousy is a wonderful, first off, wonderful indicator. When jealousy appears, right away, you know, I care about this person. Great. Because you can also, when jealousy comes up, you may also be like, I want to smash in his headlights. I mean, you've heard the song, smash his headlights and, you know, key his car, the whole nine yards. So if, if you're, if you go right to that anger and rage side, if a way to bring that some balance to that energy is to say, okay, if I didn't care, I wouldn't feel this. So at least we can establish that there's care along with the fear. Now we have to figure out what we want to do with it. And what I've noticed is that people who can talk about jealousy with their partners have so much more bandwidth for addressing it creatively, for, for making it a part of their life experience. You know, they're a person, jealousy is going to come up that isn't inherently negative and simply gives them a new thing, a new aspect, a new angle, a new way to see their partner, a new way to talk to their partner. But most people don't have a, a standard jealousy conversation. Instead, monogamy sort of promises us that jealousy is all handled. Right. You get the, you get like, you get the ring or you get the promise. And from there on out, you're supposed to be protected, except we all know that's bull. We know it's bull because Otherwise, cheating wouldn't be a thing. Right. <laughs> and and every source we have, mythology, music, the all the narratives, the films, everything around us, jealousy's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's it's not. It's everywhere. Every story has this. And it's not just our romantic relationships, it's our friendships. Mm -hmm. It's our it's our our relationships with our parents and our colleagues. Jealousy can pop up anywhere. So if we want to use this energy, first identify that it's present and just allow it to be present. Yeah. What does jealousy feel like in my body? It's not actually an emergency. The feeling itself, the energy itself, isn't the emergency. And you can actually ramp it up and create an emergency because if instantly we go to accus accusations or asking our partner to change immediately so that we don't feel away, now we're right away, we're not in a collaborative generative state. So if instead we turn to the body and say, what the heck is going on? What sensations am I feeling? What's, what does my body want from me right now? One of the things I always teach people is figure out what your regulation skills are. How are you going to get your, yourself back into a state where you can actually have a conversation? Right. And it's not just fear and panic. A lot of times people who suffer, really suffer from jealousy, they don't just struggle with it. Like they are deep in their suffering. They don't directly ask their partner for anything. Instead, right. they, they sort of go around the issue and they try to control what their partner does so that they won't have the feeling. Right. It's just not a good long-term solution. It, it doesn't get you what you want. Yeah. It, 
feels like if we could add a little bit of vulnerability to this energy, yep. like really open, honest vulnerability to have that conversation, right? And vulnerability on both on both sides. Right. You know, like one could have compassion, right? That this is a thing for the other person and then vulnerability and just like, wow, I'm just really afraid right now or whatever it is that's true for you in that moment, you know, God. Yeah. And I love, I love Brene Brown's. She has this sentence that she talks about in her work. Like, okay, so the story I'm making up in my head is right. right. And just being really open and vulnerable and, and giving the opportunity for that to deepen the connection, right. And allowing your partner to know you, to know right. all about you. I, I know that I have found like, um, and I'm, I'm speaking again, cisgendered men and women partnership is, is, you know, what I'm speaking to specifically, but I've found that the men, they want to please and provide and protect and create that sense of like yumminess for their beloved, but we have to give them a chance to do so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we have, we have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, but also when jealousy shows up, I notice that men often aren't able to, they're not, they're not, they don't feel free to share when they feel jealousy or the fear that comes with jealousy, because that is tied to the idea that they need someone. Yeah. And the cultural story around cisgender heterosexual men is that they shouldn't need anyone or anything. And so now their tools for dealing with it be look a little brutal. I mean, let's just face it. Jealousy can end in violence and it does. This is why it gets studied. And from the other side, it can look like a lot of really intense controlling behaviors that really close down and limit our relationship in ways that, you know, monogamy doesn't mean that we can't have other friends. Monogamy doesn't mean that we can't, you know, go to classes and, and travel. But often if jealousy, the bigger jealousy gets, the more people start to feel like they have to constrain and get control. Or I'll hear people say, um, I just got to get a handle on this. I got to get this under control. I'm like, okay, it's never jealousy itself. Don't try, like it, you cannot control it. It's, it's much bigger than any of us. It's an archetypal force. It's a universal pattern of behavior. It's not going away. So instead we want to work your experience of it and what you can use it for. Cause I have watched people leverage it into delicious relationship, but you got to be brave. You, yeah. you got to be brave about it. You got to be brave. You got to be vulnerable. You got to be willing to be seen, you know, yeah. in that way, be willing to be judged for it. If, yep. if that's what happens, I mean, it does, it would, I think it takes quite a bit of courage to really be open about this particular topic because you know, it is something that <laughs> it doesn't matter what side of the spectrum you're on, it, you know, it's shamed either way. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. It's not something that people wake up and say like, well, how am I going to deal with my jealousy today? Right. Even people who know that they struggle with it, they, that's not it. We really try to ignore it. And as, so I did my original study with people who were polyamorous and I did that on purpose. It was because I knew that they knew they were dealing with jealousy. Cool. So I did that, found some great information. Now I'm repeating the study with monogamous folks. And one of the things that has come up as I've done my, um, my like honed my questions is a lot of monogamous people really imagine that the monogamous agreement, that that ring is the thing that protects them, mm. that, that they don't have to have these conversations. And so what happens is I, I'll ask a simple question like, um, well, what is your monogamy agreement? And they have no idea right. because they didn't have that. So here's where jealousy could come in and be the, the reason, the crowbar that we like lift and make a little space to start having conversations that go deep. And, and in that depth is a lot of good stuff, a lot of really, really good stuff and great sex and so much good stuff. But it, often people will only do the work or they'll only start the work because of the pain. So I really do think of jealousy as like, Oh, if that's the crowbar, then that's the crowbar. And we just, you know, we use it for what it's good for. And then we learn how to deal with it. So it doesn't have to be this, this looming monster in our life. It doesn't. And that's the thing about trying to suppress 
any kind of energy, right? Yep. Like bringing this back to like, or, to living orgasmically and the willingness to be present with everything. When you try to suppress any kind of energy, it just gets bigger. Energy always has to be in movement, yep. right? It has to be alive. And, and when you suppress it, it's just going to come out in all kinds of different kind of crazy sideways kind of ways. You I know. say it's like trying to hold a beach ball underwater. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not just, work. <laughs> it's just not going to work. It's just not going to work. So I'm curious now, um, what are, as a researcher, what are some of the, for, for, so I think that so many things want to come out of my mouth right now, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Anyways. <laughs> no, so, so, okay. So the suppression of energy and then it's, and then it comes out sideways. And I'm, I'm guessing what's popping right now is that there may be people out there that aren't even aware that they're experiencing jealousy, that they're yes. not aware that some of the behavior that they're doing, the root cause of it is something they're not really could be jealousy. Yes. I'm curious, what are some of the ways that you know that this energy can creep out sideways, right? If someone's just like not trying, I'm not jealous. No, I'm fine. Everything's yep. okay. Yeah, I'm secure. I got this, whatever. And they're just like pushing that energy down. What are some of the 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 things that people could do that could be a, a clue that oh there's something here i need to look at this actually isn't authentic real behavior <laughs> yeah yeah and that's really common we don't nobody wants to like wake up in the morning and say i'm a really jealous person right I've literally right. never heard anybody say that and i've asked a lot of people about jealousy <laughs> um even people who have figured out how to enjoy it no nobody says that so there are some, there's a checklist. First off, if you have relationship anxiety and you like, if you tend to refer to yourself as a, as like having relationship anxiety, fear that your partner is going to leave you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that is related to jealousy. It's because the, the literal definition of jealousy is a protective feeling of hostility toward the interruption of a love bond. Mm -hmm. So if you're anxious that you're going to lose someone like and yet jealousy has a target. So here's where it gets, where we go from amorphous anxiety to jealousy, amorphous anxiety, just like this, it, it's not really attached to anything. And I'm just super anxious all the time. It doesn't pinpoint something that could interrupt, but most of us have a really creative imagination. So we don't actually need our partner to have somebody following them around, looking at them and hitting on them at parties. We don't even need that. No problem. We've got Instagram. So if you find yourself paying attention to who likes your partner's Instagram posts or paying attention to who is talking to them in those social media spaces, heck, even LinkedIn, if you find yourself paying, like attending to that, noticing it, tracking it, or having a habitual pattern of tracking it. There you go, right there. Okay, like we need to deal with the jealousy. That is, that this is important because you are absolutely, you have fallen into a spot where you are limiting your own capacity for just enjoying your life by having this habitual behavior that you need in order to feel safe. And that can, I've seen people need to check their partner's socials every two to five minutes, just mm. like constantly, like get that intense in a particular area. So if you're doing that, if you're tracking them, you're watching them and you've decided, right. let's talk, let's not, let's not let this get any worse yeah. because this is hard and we got to figure out how to regulate this system. The other thing, if you tell me you're not jealous, just like flippantly, like you have no, you don't take any time to check in with yourself. If you were, if your initial reaction is just, nope. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more complicated than that. So take a breath say that was my, that was my gut reaction. That was just my knee jerk reaction. I didn't really think about it. now go deeper and give yourself time to, to ruminate on it just a little bit. Do I have fear that my love bond might be interrupted? I have been working on this full time for 12 years and I still deal with jealousy. I have not solved it. I have not cured it. It doesn't go away. It's present. So let yourself off the hook from needing not to feel it. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Mm. And that I wonder that needing not to feel it. Um, and I am, I am guilty, guilty, guilty of 
I, I, I remember with my partner who's quite a bit younger than I am. And so he has a different relationship with social media than I do. Yeah. I'm not someone who's on it all of the time. And it's just a different, it's a different generation. So it's a different relationship. And I remember when we first got together, I, I remember noticing like the anxiety that would come up. I'm like, why is he on his phone all the time? Like yeah. what's going on in there? So those crazy thoughts that sort of started seeping into, and then I noticed in my body, like just this like, <sighs> you know, what? Yeah. yeah, right? Um, so a hundred percent. And I know there's a lot of people out there. That- so many. There's no shame. Let's just let's just remove the stigma around it. It's just information because it's just I'm information. Being confused about my own response and reaction, and being confused about what I was feeling. Um, and I remember talking to him about it. I was like, I don't know what's going on, but I get really anxious when you're on your phone a lot. Like, what is that? You know? And we just had really some really great curious conversations about it and some really not so great curious conversations about it. Like it just went the spectrum of me trying to be present with what is this energy? And that's when I really started tracking it back to, you know, my parents and my mom and what was she experiencing when I was in her belly and I remember I have stories like my dad had an ex-wife and there was a lot of jealousy there and I was like okay and I remember that energy being so present right that it's familiar it's familiar to my body it's familiar to my psyche but having done so much work and and having been single for a long time and then all of a sudden this energy coming up right because for me it comes up mostly in 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 relationship. And, yeah. and just like, and then I really was like, I don't feel like myself. I'm not being myself right now. That shit just takes over in yes. a way, you know, there you go. Lot of- That's the key that taking yeah. over in Jungian psychology. We call that you are now in the grips of the complex. In it. You are not like you are. That is autonomous. It's got you. Yes. And jealousy. When you're in that now, this is why we get so concerned about it because once you're in the grips of that, you might be taking actions that do not reflect your core principles. They do not reflect who you want to be. Yeah, totally. You got to get clear and let yourself become aware of it so that you don't just get sucked down into it or that once you're sucked down into it, you have some tools for getting out of that spot. Yeah. This is a rough spot. Yeah. I was definitely, definitely sucked in and it definitely took a lot of massaging of like just being present with my energy, how do I regulate my nervous system? Because then it started to just kind of build. And I was like feeling that low grade anxiety, like all of the time, you know? Um, and like, okay, what do I need to do to take care of myself? Right. Cause I can't control his phone usage. I can't, I, I, I Privacy is very important to me personally. So I'm not going to like, I mean, I know people that have gone into phones, oh, yeah. go into the computers and they're looking and they're, they're, they're deleting friends from the list because they don't want that. I mean, it's like the, oh, yeah. the level of really insanity that can arise from the denial of this energy. And from the, the, the w- unwillingness to own the fact that it's mine. Yeah. My partner doesn't have to be doing a single thing wrong for me to be experiencing this. And when we ask our partner to change something, so we don't have to feel something, so we don't have to experience that. Well, no. first off, you just gave away all your power. You oh. told them how to hurt you. So like bad idea and you can't do anything about it. So this journey, this journey that I was on, what I got to like, um, eventually a lot of deep soul searching and body feeling, because that's the thing, we don't want to feel it, right? But if you just let yourself be present with those sensations and with that energy and with that feeling, what I got to was like uh, how I never really felt seen and loved by my, by my dad, right? Yep. Uh, the proverbial <laughs> dad. Yep, there it is. My dad was a workaholic and he was never really home. And, you know, he, he was not really like a family, right? He was good at providing financially, but emotionally he wasn't, he, you know, he's Latin. His job was to provide and that's right. Did. We didn't really expect anything more from him, yep. but once I let but your soul, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once I let myself get to that place of like, oh, this is hitting that button. 
And then beyond that, I had to let myself feel the rejection and the pain of that, which was just at a different level than I had ever I had a cognitive understanding. Well, my dad didn't pay attention. You know, that's all up in the head. My dad didn't pay attention and that's why I feel, no, no, no. But but the body is also having an experience about it. And to allow that cognitive to dive into the body and to let yourself just be with that. The most beautiful part was that I allowed my partner to be there with me in that right? He was totally willing to be with me and hold space. And, and, and it, it really did create a much more delicious connection and a bond. Um, but I think the important pieces of this is like allowing yourself to be aware of it, right? right. I'm experiencing this yep. right now, allowing exactly. yourself to be aware of it, allowing yourself to be vulnerable yep. and communicate it, Right. Yep. And we're, 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 I think that we just want to caveat, we're talking about mostly healthy relationships, right? If yeah. you're in a relationship where you need to call the cops or you need to look like, like that's a different, we're not going there. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Big old asterisk on that. <laughs> yeah. Cause I've experienced when I was younger, jealousy from men and that can get pathological jealousy is dangerous okay. in any gendered situation. It's dangerous and it's okay yeah to be afraid. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't think it's not, it is because you, that fear is for a reason. It's telling you to protect yourself in yeah. all the ways that you need to do. Yeah. And what I'm speaking to with this recent experience with my partner, I mean, I know that he's not doing anything. Yeah. I know like I, he's just that kind of man, you know, yeah. so I knew that a lot of what was going on was past experiences, past stuff, crazy stuff, imagination, like all of that. Mm-hmm. So it was really interesting to be with those things. Cause I know that that jealousy can, you can, it can run ragged and destroy relationships for sure. It absolutely can. And, and there's the thing, the imagination is capable of everything that the real world, the the physical world is capable of. And once you find yourself riding that train, (laughs) if you are taking action based on imaginal experiences, those actions that you're taking in the world now, will they have impact? So simply letting yourself notice, name, and, and actually navigate, like, what do I need? What is it that I need here? And not make it about control. This is why we have to slow down. Right. Because if we, if we make it about control right away, we don't have, we don't get a chance to do the the rest of the thing, like go into what is the story I'm telling myself about this? Because there's the information for your personal growth. Even if this relationship doesn't wind up being the one, maybe there really is something foundational here. That's not going to make this the thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but every relationship I'm in, I want to learn something about myself. So that's where if I slow down and I let myself be with the, the sensations and name it and, and not guilt myself or shame myself mm-hmm. simply for having it. Now, even the, the icky part can become something that was worthwhile experiencing mm-hmm. on the other side of having experienced it. Nobody wants to, but yeah, yeah. on and the then- other side. Yeah, I love, uh, so notice it, name it. And then what do you need? That's yeah. so important. Right. That, Cause because that's also like, I think a lot of people don't really know what they need. So they yes. definitely don't know how to ask for it. Like, and then they expect their partners to know even when they don't know. And yeah. now, and, and I say this too, I do, I still fall into this. I have to remind myself, wait, did I ask for that thing? Or do I, do I think I asked for it because I want this so much that I can imagine that I have or that I have implied. And if they really loved me, they would just do it right. (laughs) So yeah. No, no, that's a no, no. But (laughs) I mean, I think it's so important to you. Like I know if that energy is coming up that I need more attention. I need more reassurance. I need more communication. I need more connection. That's, those are needs that I, that I, when that energy comes up, it's just information that I'm, I need something, right? right? It may be from him and it may be, you know, like you said, this, this energy can come up in, in all kinds of relationships and situations. Totally. I mean, think about this. Have you asked, have you had to find the relationship conversations with your friends? 
most of us haven't. And so if you feel a friend pulling away, jealousy can absolutely come up. I mean, the whole movie Bridesmaids is based on that, <laughs> right? So jealousy can absolutely come up. And if you, if you see it as the opportunity to name the thing that you actually want from this relationship, now it could be that you could get the things um, and stop telling yourself the story that it's about something you lack and instead say, oh, this is actually about me having the opportunity to co-create the relationship I want. Totally, totally. And I mean, I was just kind of going back to what you were saying in the beginning about this being a really complex uh, energy, because it's not just about one thing. There's a lot of different things happening at once. And I was my partner asked me the other day, so how are you feeling? And I kind of closed my eyes and I let, I let myself just have time with that question. Like, what am I feeling right now? What is happening? And I think I came up with five different things that were happening in that one moment. Yes. Great. I'm disappointed. I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm worried. Like so many things. Um, cause we tend to just like go lump things into one Yeah thing. But when you pick it apart and you let yourself be present with everything that's actually happening, then there's a chance. Then right. there's a chance of repair, a chance of connection, a chance of communion, right? Um, I think we're really all so being called to more vulnerability with ourselves. Totally. Yes. And with the people around us and, and yeah. Yeah. What a juicy, do you have any, you know, we're coming up to the end of our hour, any sort of last, last final thoughts that you want to share? And then please do, I know you have a free gift for everyone listening. Yeah. So I want to first invite people to, to enter into a conversation with themselves around jealousy. You might have heard something in here that sort of resonates and you're like, what is it? This is the kind of conversation that I say, listen to it twice because this isn't happening. This isn't the conversation that's happening in our world. Probably your parents never spoke about it, or if they did, it was just this sort of in passing, hey, share your toys kind of thing. It's okay to not know what the next step is, but if you feel any sort of resonance at all, awesome. You just found a new place where you can learn about yourself, gain more relational skills, and absolutely be living that fuller, juicier life you want. So this is good news, not bad news. Um, and I would love to offer, um, if you, if your listeners go to, um, listen to Jolie, J O L I.com, they'll go straight to a spot where they can download my jealousy workbook that lays out my five-step cognitive framework that lets them work through the cognitive part. And then there's a little bit of advice there about like where to seek out those resources that will help you do the body piece too. Um, there's so much that we can do to work with jealousy. You're not alone. You don't have to just already know how to do this. So go grab that guide. They're actually my other favorite relationship guides are in that bundle too. So some fun questions, but jealousy needs to be part of the conversation. So let's have it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. I know I'm going to go check out that. I, I love getting all the free gifts from, yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> right. We all come at these, these things from different angles, right? This is my work. This is, I, I distilled my jealousy stuff down into 20 pages. So there, boom, you can just like grab it and do something. It's very active based. Do yeah. this now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, let's bring this energy to the light, you yes. know, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing bad or shameful or inappropriate or wrong about, I mean, we never talked about this in my family, but the energy was so present, right? And I'm probably the first one in my family to even be processing what this is, you know, from my body and my psyche. So I invite everyone to, you know, have and be the courage right? To bring this energy to the light. And, and I don't mean light, like light is good and you know, whatever, but just so that we can all like, oh, it Where is you can see it. Thing. <laughs> it no one is immune, I don't think to this. And so if we can bring it up and, and be present with it and be aware of it and eliminate the shame and eliminate the wrongness, then it's something that we can collectively change, right? Yes. Everything is changeable. Everything's, Everything's changeable. But it's not changeable if you're hiding it. It's yep. not changeable if you're not paying attention. So, so that's that's our invitation for everyone listening. Thank you so much. I have a free gift as well. Um, 
Uh, I'm starting these monthly community calls, which I'm really excited about. So if you're listening and you have even more questions about this, if you're struggling with this topic, uh, I'd love to invite you to come and play with me. Monthly community call, ask me anything. Uh, no topic is off limits. And you can get that link at, or sign up at pattyalfonso.sexy slash askpatty. And both of these links, don't worry about rewinding and having to write it down. It's They're going to be somewhere around this recording. <laughs> so um, thank you, Jolie, Dr. Hamilton. Thank you so much for being on the show today and for sharing all of your beautiful insights and your research on this really important topic, I think. Um, you know, my partner and I are going to be creating and playing with orgasmic relationships. How do you create an orgasmic relationship? And that really, you know, includes everything when it comes to relationship. I think relationships are such a, a catalyst for those things that we can't be aware of on our own, right? Yep. And this is definitely, I think, one of them that can very get very loud in a relationship if you haven't uh, done the work around it. So that is that. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you again, Jolie. Uh, go grab our free gifts and Let's let's create a better better world for ourselves. <laughs> Bye, my dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs>